both sides are warmongering. And Ahmadinejad, I talked to my dad about this over lunch, right? Uh, if you couldn't tell, my dad's in L.A. That's why there's been a lot of conversations. About, ah, it's hard to my dad. That sounds like a fun lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the kind of lunches my dad and I do. How do you think I wound up this way? So the problem is Ahmadinejad is uh, goading us, and he's poking us, and he's poking us. We're going to cut your arms off. We're, gonna, we're developing nuclear energy. He doesn't say nuclear bombs, by the way. He says nuclear energy. And, uh, and we're going to, you know, Israel should be wiped off the map. And then Islamic Jihad, not just, you know, physical taunting, I mean verbal taunting, Islamic Jihad is related to Iran. They do the bombing, kills nine in Tel Aviv. It looks like you're trying to provoke a fight. we got warmongers on both sides. I think the reason they're trying to provoke a fight, if they are, Iran, is because they think if uh, the U.S. attacks us, that's going to help us get rid of the democratic movement in Iran and that's going to inspire nationalism and going to help us to maintain our power. Now, they might be making a big mistake, because this war could have dramatic and terrible unintended consequences, not just for us, but definitely also for Iran. And Iran. They could lose half their leadership. We could kill half their leadership. Kill I don't all. think they realize what they're messing with. The, the, I think that's entirely true. I don't think they're doing it to provoke an attack, just because that doesn't ring even remotely true to me, even for uh, crazy people. But they, uh, uh, I don't think they have no interest in being attacked, because I think the, um, the likelihood is they'd be killed. Uh, I think they think they can push us around, and I think that talking tough builds credibility with them. Nothing, you know, we are incredibly unpopular on Arab Street, and nothing increases a, 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 a leader's popularity than standing up to the biggest, baddest bully on the block, and at least in, the, well, I was going to say, in their eyes, we're the biggest, baddest bully, but in everybody's eyes, we're the biggest, <laughs> baddest bullies. Yeah, these so, days. So they stand up to us, they talk tough, and I think that is the effect of sort of, telling uh, disaffected Iranians, loving, yeah, stand up to the Americans who went into Iraq for no reason, who were killing our brothers for no reason. I can't foresee in my mind, I mean, I, I can foresee it. I think it's unlikely that they're actually designed to provoke an attack because that, of course, uh, in all likelihood would be disastrous for, as it was for the Ba'ath Party in, in, in Iraq, would be disastrous for the actual leaders in Iraq. The reason I think they, if they want to attack, uh, provoke an attack, I think they believe the, the Bush administration that they're only going to do airstrikes. And, uh, and if they do airstrikes, they think, well, that's not really going to hurt us at all. It's just going to hurt, you know, if they hurt the Iranian citizens, we don't give a damn about that. Mm -hmm. And then, second of all, they might just be simply, as Ben said, they might be arrogant and they think, oh, we could push them around, and they won't really attack us. If they think that, they're making a huge mistake. Because they think these Bush guys, they'd have to be crazy to attack us. But the Bush guys are crazy, yeah, and, and I, they will attack you. And I think that they, yeah, that's entire, yeah. I mean, they're unstable, and they may think they can beat us uh, militarily. That, that's see, also In impossible. a world without us having gone into Iraq, how would you handle that, that sort of arrogance? Uh, there's a hundred ways. See, that's the other thing that drives me crazy. It's either war... Or we let them have nukes, no. and they launch them. No, we do what we've always done, diplomacy, negotiations, and, yes, the dreaded word, compromise. You know what we, who did, we did that with for 50 freaking years? The Soviet Union. And it worked. Yeah. It was incredibly successful. There is no time for the end to diplomacy unless there is an imminent threat or an attack on, a, on you or an ally. Otherwise, diplomacy is its own reward. You're talking, and war is not happening. When did diplomacy get perceived as being weak, though? I mean, both our administration and I'm sure people on Arab Street well, think you, diplomacy is weak. I'll and tell you we exactly why. And this, is why this is why these guys hurt America. Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, Chris Matthews, Bill O'Reilly. They have turned the incredibly noble act of keeping people and countries out of war and saving the lives of millions of people into, ooh, just weak and they don't care about our own security. It is pathetic, and all those guys that I mentioned have hurt America as a result.